Sunapee is a quaint town in western New Hampshire, idolized for its well-known vibrant Lake Sunapee and Mount Sunapee, both of which draw thousands of visitors every year seeking a pristine vacation. The ideal location is built on a rich history, packed with distinct individuals who greatly contributed to the town's growth and structures that hold detailed pasts. The vibrant community of Sunapee has lived through the ages, producing a unique feel of a town that all generations can enjoy. The town of Sunapee took several names in its growth. In 1768, Royal Governor John Wentworth of the province of New Hampshire granted a large charter of land. Then, in 1771, John Wendell, one of the citizens to obtain the grant, became a sole advocator and advertiser for Sawville. He advertised through the Providence, Rhode Island Gazette and was able to draw people into the budding town. In thanks and honor of the benefactor, John Wendell, the town's name was changed from Sawville to Wendell in 1781. The town's name was changed to Sunapee in 1850. The name Sunapee is derived from the Algonquin Indian words Suna meaning goose and Api meaning lake. The Indians called the body of water Lake of the Wild Goose. A relatively unknown figure of Sunapee's history is Enos Merrill Clough. Clough claims the title of the first inventor of a horseless carriage. His finished automobile consisted of 5,463 pieces and 14 years of work. Reaching a top speed of six to eight miles per hour and running on a steam engine, the Fairy Queen made trips to neighboring towns such as Newport, Lebanon, and Lancaster. At the time, the highways were off limits to the automobile because the machine frightened the horses. Discouraged by the setback, Mr. Clough sold the Fairy Queen to a resident of Lakeport, who proceeded to then crash the Queen into a fence, causing heavy damage. Ironically, Mr. Clough predicted to see the day that horseless carriages would fill the streets. His correct prediction was answered when he was struck by a New York automobile while working flag crossing duty. The white country house located at the center of Lake Sunapee Harbor was once owned by well-known resident Wallace Flanders. Flanders House is now a gift shop owned and operated by local resident Mrs. Sharon Parsons. Flanders Stable which he had built directly across from his house, was donated by Fay H. Osborne to the Sunapee Historical Society in April of 1980. Wallace Flanders was Fay H. Osborne's great-grandfather. Located at the peak of Main Street, overlooking the harbor, sits the large, simple, yet extraordinary livery the livery was built in 1890 to serve as a stable for 30 horses. The main level housed carriages and buggies, while the horse stalls were located on the floor below. The only entrance to the horse stalls was by the interior horse ramp, which workers and horses alike shared in their descent to the stalls. A little known fact is that the livery's interior horse ramp, though inactive, is one of the few remaining in New England. Below the stalls lies a passageway where wagons could pull in under the stable floor to load manure. While the stalls have been long deserted, the nameplates for the horses still remain above the vacant stables, with some names still visible. Since its use as a stable during the 1920s, the livery has also been used as a fire station, courthouse, town office, police station, 
Boy Scouts Meeting Hall, and today an arts community center. One of Sunapee's most highlighted men in its history was the comedian, entertainer, and movie star Billy B. Van. In the year 1902, Billy B. Van came to George's Mills, seeking the open air and relaxation of New Hampshire to cure his recently diagnosed tuberculosis. Billy quickly made himself at home in the scenery and beauty of Sunapee. He made several silent films during his stay in George's Mills. One of the films, Where Are Your Husbands, was recently discovered in the depths of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The film was released in 1920, just after the 19th Amendment, which provided women's suffrage. The film's reverse role in society theme was a play on the amendment's release, with the roles of men and women switched. While in George's Mills, Billy farmed alongside his family on the properties he bought. His house today still lies directly across from his barn, now known as Prospect Hill Farm. Today, the farm hosts a large gallery of antiques filled to the brim with all sorts of household furniture, decorations, and statues. In the farm, Billy used to host small performances and the signs advertising them can still be found on display in the gallery's collection. Billy soon became so invested in Sunapee that he attempted to rename George's Mills to Van Harbor. This pursuit made him unwelcome in town, so he moved over to the nearby town of Newport. In Newport, Billy made and sold pine tree soap because he loved the smell and it helped him through his tuberculosis. Newport was soon nicknamed the Sunshine Town by Billy's nickname, the Sunshine Man. Lake Sunapee's popularity was fed by the visitors who stayed in the three large hotels that sat overlooking the lake. The Benmere Inn, the Grand Leden, and the Sioux Nippy Lodge were the largest hotels on the lake. The steamboats carried people from hotel to hotel across the lake. Companion to the steamboats was the train, which had a lake station junction where the train met with the steamboats to drop off passengers. The start of the steamboats era on the lake came from the Woodsum brothers, Frank, Daniel, and Elias Woodsum. Steamboats transported passengers to many destinations along the shores of the lake. The Lady Woodsum, first of the Woodsum boats on the lake in 1876, was a 50-foot long, one-story boat that carried up to 75 passengers. The original, sadly, blew up, killing Elias Woodsum. The Woodsum brothers' largest boat was the Armenia White. She could carry 600 passengers or more. She was named after a common visitor to Sunapee from Concord, Mrs. Armenia White. The Winona, formerly known as the Edmund Burke, was 87 feet long and held over 500 passengers. This boat was owned by a competing company to the Woodson Brothers. Sadly, it was another ill-fated boat that caught fire in 1904. 
The last of the Woodson brothers' boats to cease operation was the Woodson's third boat, the Kearsarge. 70 feet long and carrying up to 250 passengers, the boat burned a ton of coal a day. The pilot house of the Kearsarge can be found in the Sunapee Historical Society Museum. Today, two passenger boats remain on the lake in memoriam of the steamboats of old. The MV Kearsarge restaurant ship provides tourists with a trip around the lake while enjoying a meal. And the MV Mount Sunapee 2 tour boat provides cruises on the lake during the warm seasons. In 1898, people of Sunapee created the Lake Sunapee Protective Association to protect and conserve the Lake Sunapee environment. One of its early notable things was that it negotiated the lake uh, height. Uh, up until that time, the lake level could actually change up to about eight or nine feet during the season. The large variation in the water level caused problems for the steamboats on the lake, causing in some places long sunken stone beds to be made for the steamboats to glide over safely. LSPA, or the, its predecessor, got involved in negotiating between the steam companies, the steamboat companies, the people on the lake, and the owners of the water wheel mills on Sugar River, which is the outlet of Lake Sunpee. And so their agreement, uh, which holds today, it had a couple of tweaks, is to have the lake level uh, vary no more than three feet, which is reasonable. The extraordinary lighthouses on the lake were originally built by the Woodson brothers and have been maintained by the LSPA throughout the years, providing light for the steamboats back then and today's boaters as well. The lighthouses, there are three of them. Actually, there are five in New Hampshire, two uh, are on the ocean, and three are here on Lake Sunapee. The first and only library in Sunapee had 300 volumes of fiction, reference, and children's books. The land was purchased and the building established from a bequest of Almerin Burpee Abbott and his wife Martha. Only a few years ago, the building became the old Abbott Library and all the volumes were transferred into a new library less than a mile up Route 11. The old Abbott Library is now the new Sunapee Historical Society archives with bits of Sunapee's history on display ranging from magic lantern slides to old factory items. One of Sunapee's most famous recognition comes from its history built around American rock and roll band Aerosmith. Lead singer Steven Tyler and the guitarist Joe Perry spent their childhood summers in Sunapee, while bassist Tom Hamilton went to a nearby New London school. The sparks of the band came from Tyler and Perry's first meeting at a local restaurant, The Anchorage, which was an ice cream parlor at the time, located on the water of the harbor. The group started out separately, with Steven Tyler's first band in Sunapee called The Strangers, and Perry and Hamilton in The Chain Reaction. The three formed their band Aerosmith from their performances at The Barn. The Barn in George's Mills was the place to go for teenagers to gather and watch bands play. Today, The Barn is known as The Manor. The new band played throughout New Hampshire Nashua, Concord, Manchester, and of course, The Barn. Now, almost 50 years later, the band has toured the world, won Grammys, performed at the Super Bowl, and earned a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Today, the Sunapee region is approaching its 250th birthday. The town continues to draw tourists from across the globe, hosting annual holiday parades, marathons, lake events, and more.
Welcome to the Sunapee Archives. This is the latest project of the Sunapee Historical Society. I think you found uh, information about a number of pieces of Sunapee history, and if you want to uh, learn more about any of those or have other questions about Sunapee history, you're welcome to visit us either at our museum in the harbor or at the archives.